All right, class, uh, welcome back. We're starting a new unit uh, today. And uh, what we're starting to do this, un uh, this unit is um, we're gonna be talking about fractions, decimals, and later on we're gonna add in percents. So uh, today we're just gonna do uh, what should be a lot of uh, a review uh, around fractions and decimals. Okay, so just start off with your name and the date. So uh, just to review really quickly, so fractions, um, are uh, are partial numbers, uh, parts of numbers, and we write them like something like this. So like two out of five. And the parts of our fraction, uh, the number on top, we call that the numerator. And the number on bottom, we call the denominator. And uh, sometimes it's useful to represent fractions visually. So we might have something like maybe a piece of pie and uh, we're gonna split it into five pieces, right? Okay, and so we have five individual parts of this pie. And if I wanna represent it two fifths, then I, would, I could talk about two pieces of the pie. Decimal numbers are things like 0 0.625. And uh, just remember with your decimals, uh, the each each uh, place after the decimal point has a has a different place value. So this uh, first digit right here is in what we call the tenth spot, and this place value here is in the hundredth, and this one here is in the thousandth, and so on as we go along. Okay, so if we have some uh, if we have some fractions, we can convert them uh, pretty easily into decimals, depending on what the denominator is. So these are all examples of, of easy conversions. We have seven over ten, which is literally seven tenths. So if you remember that when you do your decimal number, the tenths place is that first spot right there. That's that first um, place value. So if I have seven tenths, then this is just going to be zero point seven. I'm going to put a seven in the tenth spot. Here I've got uh, one over 100 or 1 100th. And remember that the second uh, place value was the 100th place. So I'm going to put a 1 in that spot. So a 0 here and then a 1 in the 100th spot. Here I have 19 hundredths. So I'm going to go all the way to that 100th spot, but I'm going to have 19 uh, parts of 100. The 1 over 1,000 or 1 1,000th means I'm going to have zeros in the first two places, but a 1 in the 1,000th spot. And 23 over 1,000 or 23 thousandths mean I'll have uh, a zero in the first place and then a 23 and I'm going to end up in the thousandth place. So um, if we need to change other fractions into decimals, <clears throat> it might not be quite that easy. And so we've got a couple of different strategies here that we can use. And the first one is to take a look at this denominator and see if you can convert it into an easy denominator and by easy I mean something that's either a 10, a hundred, a thousand and so on, 10,000 or a hundred thousand. Um, and if we can do that simply then it'll it'll be a pretty easy conversion. So one thing we notice is five, uh, I can actually turn that into, I can turn that into 10 and the way I would do that is I would just multiply it by two which is fine as long as I do the exact same thing to the top of my fraction. And so I end up with three times two is six over 10. Like we saw before, six over 10 is six tenths. So I'm just gonna put a zero point and then a six in the 10th place. And then there's my answer. Okay, take a look at the next one, six over 25. Now 25 can't be turned into 10, but it can be turned into 100 fairly easily. And the way I would do that is I would just multiply it by 4 to make 100. So as long as I do the same thing to the top, multiply that by 4, I'm okay. So 6 times 4 is 24. 24 over 100 means 0 0.24. So uh, if I get a fraction where it's not so easy to turn my denominator into 10 or 100 and so on, I'm going to have to do something different. And in this case, for example, 3 over 8, uh, I, I, it doesn't go into 10, I can't turn it into 100, so I'm a little bit stumped. In that case, you're going to have to use long division. So remember that uh, 3 over three over 8 is really the exact same thing as 3 divided by Eight. This line here is the same as a division. So if I do long division, then I'm going to have three, and I'm going to divide that by eight. Now, 
When you do your long division, you might notice, well, 8 doesn't go into 3. It goes into 3 zero times. Just remember that after this 3, after this 3, there's, there's a whole bunch of zeros that go after this 3 that we can use if need be. So while 8 doesn't go into 3, it does go into 30. And it'll go, uh, it'll go 3 times into 30 to make 24. So I do a subtraction here, 30 minus 24 is 6, and then I can bring down another 0 here uh, to make 60, and 8 is going to go 7 times into 60 to make 56, 60 minus 56 is 4, bring down another 0 to make 40, and then 8 goes 5 times into 40, and I'm done. My decimal place is right here, and so 3 eighths is the same as 0 0.375. Okay, so if we want to go from a decimal back to a fraction, we're going to do the same steps. In fact, this is often a little bit easier to do. The trick is this comment right here, reduce to lowest terms, okay? So uh, let me give you an example. 0.73, I've already seen that this is the, this is the tenth spot, and then this is the hundredth spot. So if I have a 73, then that's the same as 73 over 100. Now we have to check to see if we can reduce this to lowest terms. And by lowest terms, we want to, um, we want to uh, uh, simplify our fraction. This fraction can't be simplified because 73 and 100 don't have any common factors that we can uh, get rid of. But take a look at this one, 0 0.12, is like 12 over 100 and 12 and 100 do have a common factor of 4. So if they have a common factor of 4, if we're going to reduce to lowest terms, we need to divide top and bottom by 4. And so 12 divided by 4 is 3 and 100 divided by 4 is 25. And this is, this is the best answer, this is the simplest answer. All right, so there's different kinds of decimal numbers uh, that, that we'll see. Decimal numbers such as 0.1 and 0.25 are what we call terminating decimals. And by terminating, we mean the numbers eventually stop. Uh, other decimals such as 0.33333 which goes on and on forever or 454545 that goes on forever are repeating decimals. And some of these decimals uh, just repeat forever. So in order to show that they repeat forever, we draw a bar over the digits that repeat. Just so for example, 0 0.33 repeater, we could draw 0 0.3 with a bar just over top of the 3. And 0.454545 would be 0 0.45 with a bar over the 4 and the 5. And 8111 would be 0 0.81 with a bar just over top of the 1, not the 8 because it doesn't repeat. So uh, we're going to do a quick comparison here and see if we can come up with some rules for helping us figure out repeating uh, decimal numbers. Okay, so we're going to use a calculator for the next step here and we're going to divide the following things. So let's see here. Okay, so the first thing we want to divide is 5 divided by 9. 5 divided by 9. And that is. 0.555555. So we can see that that's actually the same as 0 0.5 repeating. The next one, 38. 38 divided by 99 uh, looks like 383838. 38, 38. So this is 0 0.38 repeating. And this one here, 13 divided by 999. 13 divided by 999 is 013013. And all of that is repeating over and over again. So when we look at these patterns uh, for our, our, our fractions, what we should notice is that the, the, digit, the numerator repeats and the number of repeating uh, decimals is the same as the number of nines in our denominator, right? So I had one nine here, I had one repeating digit, two nines here, two repeating digits, and three nines there, three repeating digits. So the number of digits that repeat
equals the number of nines in the denominator. Okay, so for example, if we wanted to write the following repeating decimals as fractions, 0.2 repeater would be the same as 2 over 9. And 0.875, I've got 1, 2, 3 repeating decimals, so that would be 875 divided by 9, 9, 9. And 0 0.03 repeater, I've got 2 repeating decimals, so that would be 3 over 99. You notice I don't need to put the 0 here because we know this is 0 in front of that 3. Okay, that's it for 3.1. Don't forget to do your recap.